I would like to thank God. <laughs> the um, skies have opened and created this opportunity for me. I'd like to thank my agent. Uh, I'd like to thank the producer. Um, I'd like to thank the film festival director for making this opportunity. It's such a fabulous opportunity. I can't thank you enough. And I'm working on a new project called My Fabulous, Film Mr. Fabulous. Come see it. Um, it's already been shown worldwide. I can't wait to share it with you. Thank you. We'll be talking to Rebecca Louisa Smith, the film festival doctor. After choosing not to pursue a career in academia, Dr. Rebecca Louisa Smith began her film industry career in 2008, working as one of the producers for Wales' most successful national horror film festivals, the Abattoir Horror Festival, which is part of the prestigious European Fantastic Film Festival Federation. Hello Triple Eight crew viewers, it's Jay Kimuras, aka Mr. Fabulous, and I'm joined by the film doctor herself, Rebecca Louisa Smith, who runs a film company providing a service to filmmakers to make them a global success. Rebecca Louisa Smith, how are you, my darling? I'm good, how are you, lovely? I'm very well, I'm very well. Look at absolute beautiful lady in red. <laughs> lady in red, looking gorgeous. Rebecca Louisa, tell us and our viewers the key to your success. The key is working with fantastic films from fantastic filmmakers all over the world. Um, so what we do is get those great films seen at the best festivals around the world to get the best awards, success and recognition. Well, awards, you mentioned awards, <laughs> yeah. darling. I mean, I probably will need a second house <laughs> to fit in all your awards. 240 awards, I must say. I mean go through one of those experiences with me. So one of our first uh, major breakthroughs on the festival circuit was a feature film called Solitary, mm. um, which stars um, Catherine McEwen and Serena Taylor, and was is that produced by Roger Taylor from Queen. And it's a really strong uh, drama. And that one got 12 awards on the festival circuit mm. and did 15 festivals. And I think it's still maybe in a way now going. But that was a great breakthrough, showing how a very small, you know, low-budget independent feature could really get out there. So I call it a little film that could, and it just now keeps going and going on, on iTunes and Amazon. Well, with a lot of care and skill and what you're doing, obviously, you you find the right balance yeah. to make somebody a success. Yeah. Um, so, for example, has there been an experience where a project has come to you and you thought, no, but you went with it and it became a success? Yes, there is actually. Um, a short film called Daisy. I almost didn't take it on because I was worrying about the length of it being half an hour short film and because it was uh, a film that was a drama but it wouldn't appeal to say festivals such as Sundance etc but it would certainly possibly could do well. I just thought I need to do it but then I thought should I? So I was a bit conflicted but I thought no I need to do it and she got 10 awards. Wow. So, um, my God, I'm glad that I did, because I just had this gut instinct, was like, you have to do this, do it for this film. It's a very good film, so you need to do it no matter what. Well, sometimes as a creative, having that gut instinct is so important. I always yeah. find that if I don't know with my gut, sometimes I regret those decisions. And, I'm, exactly. and I bet you, you know, you're so happy, 10 awards is amazing. Yeah. As a film festival doctor, what do you look for in a film? Exactly, what what is it that, you say, I want to do, I want to work with them. A lot of it is down to the story. Not it doesn't have to be like the most groundbreaking story in the whole wide world. It's more a case of how the story has been told. That it's been done in a very kind of creative, unusual way. That is different from the norm or different from the mainstream. So it's not a commercial, generic A B C D Hollywood blockbuster narrative. Okay, brilliant. And what? projects are you doing at the moment that you can tell us about? So I've got now two films which are doing quite well. We've got uh, we've got a nice portfolio but the one which is doing quite a lot of awards at the moment, winning a lot of awards, sorry, is called Soldier B. And that's now done 15 awards and I think 12 festivals. Wow. Should be getting more because it's not finished the campaign yet so it's onwards and upwards. And our recent edition we've just started to take on, do some work, is a feature film from South Africa 
called Kalushi, and that will be having its US premiere next month at the Seattle Film Festival, which is a big festival over in America. And the press we'll get for that, the interest will certainly help uh, raise the film's profile and also help, the, help me get a sales agent for the film when I go to Cannes in May as well. So Rebecca, tell me, what do festivals look for when in a project? So what they're after is original storytelling in the best possible way. So not saying having to reinvent the wheel and start a brand new story trend, more like a narrative that is groundbreaking what it's doing and how the story's been told is different to the mainstream, so not commercial or not generic. Um, but also what's important is obviously in the film to have great performances, uh, good sound, good dialogue and a strong script and high production values. It doesn't have to be like a million dollar budget short film, it's more a case of that it's been very well made to a high, to the highest quality with the strongest support from the cast and the and director. What was your proudest moment? Oh, there's been so many actually, it's just amazing. Um, I'm really pleased how, how the company is, has, is going and how it's come together over the years that I've put the work into it. Um, but I am really proud of all my films that have won awards, which is all of them, which is great. Um, but I am very proud actually for a film we worked on called The Boy with a Camera for a Face. Because not only did that get about 40 festivals and 10 awards, we also got a, um, a sales agent and distribution deal. Wow. So that was good for a short that was only 50 minutes. It screened on Channel 4 in the shooting gallery uh, about two years ago. And that's now good. It's had its own life on Vimeo and it's had over a thousand views already. Well, I've got a feeling that someone is going to come to you and say, um, I've got a film and it's called the Film Festival Doctor. <laughs> okay. And um, they're going to ask you, Rebecca, who would you like to play you? Oh, wow. Who want to play me in like a biopic? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I'd say, well, I like loads of actresses, but because I have similar hair, probably Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I like the Rachel Kurt. Well, it's grown out now, but that's one thing. But also because we're, I love her humour, so I think she'd be quite, you know, she's quite funny. So oh, I like that. I got to think about her. So if somebody had to play me, um, it would have to be Sandra Bullock. <laughs> You know, yes. Um, is that how you pronounce her name? Is Sandra Bullock? Yeah, I might, we may have to turn her up a little bit and grow her a grow tea. Well, she did Miss Congeniality. I'm sure she would. Oh, she me. did, so and she, she can do you. Ah, she could do me fabulously, um, Rebecca. Um, so, have, tell us now about your your future projects. Um, uh, what's in line for you next? So we've got now, there's a film that's in post-production, uh, which is a fantastic uh, feature film. Uh, no, it's, sorry, it's a short film called Parallel uh, City. And that's going to be, well, it's just about finished, that'll be the next thing. And we've also got now some other films, which another short film that is called Kubrick by Candlelight that is now in the editing phase. And that's a great short film, a very funny film. And so. If you had to pick, um, say, two favorite um, actors or actresses um, to play a, a, a project or a role, who would you cast? Who would you like to work with? Should I, uh, let me rephrase that. Well, I have a healthy obsession <laughs> with David Duchovny from the X-Files. Okay. Uh, I remember the day that I saw it, so I was 12 years old since then, been smitten. Um, and I mean, he's a great actor, so colour communication is great. And actress-wise, um, I like Sienna Miller. She's really interesting, very versatile. So I think I'd like to work with her on a, on a festival film. Um, she was great when she did Factory Girl as uh, Andy Warhol's muse. And how important would you say diversity is within the film industry? extremely important. I mean, I've worked with filmmakers all over the world, different races, colours, nations, the whole lot, and every one of them does fantastic films, and there's so much great talent out there. So yes, and that should be more of an emphasis, um, and there should be more festivals that devoted to that as well, which is coming up. Rebecca, I'm going to go off the topic for a little bit. I've noticed throughout our interview that you're holding on to a fabulous, fabulous bag by Cloud First. And um, it's, 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 it's quite iconic, really, because I feel like this is a moment, because I happen to have a cloud first <laughs> look. <laughs> look, I happen to have a cloud first, and I happen to have a scarf for later when I go out. Oh, um, lovely. 
Uh, I'm the first ever male. You are. To um, be be holding and taking care of a cloud first bag. Yeah. Um, mind you, mine was a little bit, maybe a bit worn than yours. Um, yes, that's true. But they, they last these bags, don't they? They do. They're the very forever lasting. Well, I'm going to, from beauty to connection to love and relationship, no excuses. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Rebecca, what is the dream? The dream is, I'm living the dream now, to be honest, but then it's taking that dream around the world with me. The next step is LA. So I've got a little base in LA, but I want to break out more there. So more client base and more connections. So living there in the dream will be wonderful. Well, the Triple Eight crew and our viewers um, are looking forward to seeing where the film festival director goes and what she invests her time in. And we can't wait to see you pick up loads more awards and who knows maybe an oscar thank you and please if you, if you do please let me know i've got a beautiful sequence number <laughs> that i've been dying to wear i um, will and you'll be there with the claw bag together i will be there with the claw bag so, together there we are on the Definitely red carpet together triple eight crew keep it real keep it locked dare to dream rebecca louisa smith thank you so much thank you thank pleasure you.